Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at the SHH H pattern shifter. Now, it also converts to a sequential shifter with just a turn of the shifting lever. Using 3D printed parts in some of its construction certainly sets it apart from other H pattern shifters around this price point. Now, how good can a 3D printed shifter be? <laughs> Time to put it through the SRG's review process and find out. So, let's get to it. Now for our closer look segment on the SHH shifter, also known as the 3D printed shifter. <laughs> Although obviously there's a lot of parts in here that are not 3D printed. First thing that we noticed uh, is going to be this big case that is printed. Now this is made from ABS. So it's a tougher material than like PLA or PTEG, those kind of things. And so, yeah, ABS is pretty tough. So they've been doing this shell for quite a while now. So I imagine that it has evolved to be something that's pretty sturdy. And it feels in the hand, you can't really compress this, maybe just a little bit on these two sides. I can get a little compression on it if I squeeze really hard. So. Yeah, apparently mounting everything into this is not presenting any problems because people are using these and have been using them for quite a while. Closer look at this, they've got a pretty good 3D printer printing these cases because there's no strings anywhere. I mean, everything is finished really nicely. You see we have the big logo here with the red and white colors. And then we have the other logo here, which is the S and the two H's are represented by a six speed gate for your H pattern shifter. And then of course shifter. On the bottom we have Newt. Newt is the latest and greatest as of this taping, which is August 15, 2019. And yeah, so the latest electronics and latest whatever improvements have been implemented in this particular shifter. On the sides here, they've actually, looks like they've milled some grooves in there, almost like finger spaces for grabbing it with your fingers. I'm sure that's aesthetics more than anything else. And you can see the lines as far as the 3D printing lines in the whole case all the way around. On this side, we have a USB-B connector and we have the switch that will take this from an H pattern to a sequential shifter. So it's two shifters in one essentially, right? And on the back of the case, this is where we have these inserts, threaded inserts, they're brass. You see little threads in them there. And this is for mounting whatever mount you're going to use. And we'll talk about the mount later on as far as how you're going to mount this shifter and the different options available to you. Right. Anything else we want to talk about? The bottom here, again, is a single plate, as you can see there. So I'm assuming I can get in there and we'll try that when we do the look inside to see what's going on here. On the top, obviously, there's a six speed gated shifter. And this actually comes with a couple of gates. And I'm going to show you those now. This is the one it originally came with. This is the seven speed in reverse, obviously. So we've got a seven plus reverse and a six plus reverse. I typically don't use anything with seven gears. So I just put the six speed with reverse and obviously reverses over here in that notch. Right now, we also have a sequential gate and this is a two piece unit. It's not a one piece. So it looks like, you know, I would, I would think that you could take this and put it directly on top when you're using it in sequential mode. And then with uh, long enough screws, you could just screw it right on top of this plate here. But again, it might be better to have the plate sitting inside like this plate is and like the other plate sits instead of having it sitting on top just for supporting and because it's a two piece unit. But we'll check that out later on when we're doing some other things as far as adjustments. Right. So those are the gates that we have as far as options. And yeah. Not much else to see here. The gates actually themselves, I'm going to show you that, are actually made of Durlin. It's not ABS. So this is Durlin or POM as it's known. And this is a very tough, stiff, but it has a slick feel to it that's very friendly as far as CNC machining. And you can see they've actually machined, oh well this is going to show up on the video, but let me get a little pointer here. These are little ramps here on this, this one here. You can see the ramps cut into this. And of course we have a ramp on the other side and we have little ramps or shapes like ramps or curves, if you will, little radiuses on the end to facilitate shifting. So yeah, a lot of good detail in this Durlin and everything is really well done here. There's no, you know, string ears hanging anywhere. There's no rough edges, just really nicely done. And 
So we've got Durlin on the, the shifter plates, and we obviously these were Durlin also. And they've got a vinyl carbon shifter, or carbon rather, <laughs> pattern on the shifter plate. And yeah, it's a pretty thick vinyl, so you can actually feel a little bit of grain there on the actual carbon fiber pattern or print. Very nice. All this stuff is, like I said, all this stuff is finished very nicely. Right. Anything else we want to talk about this? Of course, we have an aluminum shifter rod here that goes all the way down through the mechanism on the bottom. We'll see that when we do a look inside. We have a 17 millimeter by 1.5 pitch adapter here for our knobs that we'll look at in a second. Also, this is a popular size for aftermarket shifters. So you can actually put aftermarket shifters on here if you want, if you have the size of that 17 millimeter or M17 rather 1.5 pitch. And we'll be taking this off to do the look inside also. And down inside of here, just as a quick look, you'll see there's two Phillips screws, all right? There's one over here, and there's one directly across from it down in there. And that's for the tension adjustment. So when you're actually doing your shifting, you can actually adjust how hard it is or easy it is to make your shifts. Right now, it's very easy. It's on the easy setting. I'll probably be putting this on the hard setting myself. Anything else we want to look at? We'll go ahead and take a quick look at what comes with it. Um, you order a bracket, it depends on what you, bracket you want. And this is a profile or aluminum profile series bracket. And it's just an L bracket, obviously, that's going to mount to the back of the shifter like this, something like that anyway. We'll get to that when we get to the mounting segment. And yeah, so then we can mount it to a piece of profile with some M8 bolts if we want to, or some smaller bolts, depending on what you want to do. But like I said, we'll take a closer look at that later. We do get some screws that allow us to touch, attach rather that bracket. We get six of these. And, and one thing I did notice here, this is a flat blade type of screw head on this. I'm surprised it's not a socket cap screw or something like that, but yeah, or even a Phillips. It's the, <laughs> the single blade, which sometimes are easy to strip out, but yeah, it is what it is. And if you don't like these, these are, I believe, five millimeter screws, so or M5s, so we can actually change that out for something else if you wanted to. Right, anything else? Oh, we get this Allen wrench, we get two Allen wrenches. We get a two millimeter and a two and a half millimeter. I seem to have misplaced my two and a half, which happens sometimes because I'm always using my own hex head wrenches, the you know, drivers, so I usually don't use these anyway. But anyway, you do get two of those. You also get this USB cable, pretty decent one. It's got the ferrite core on it. It's not gold plate or anything, but I like to see these on a cable. In fact, I'd like to see another one on the other end. We have a USB-B, obviously that's the one that plugs into our shifter, and we have the USB-A that's going to go over to the computer. Nothing special here, but it looks like it's going to get the job done, no problem. What else we get? Oh, you get a little shifter sticker here, the SHH shifter sticker. And these are actually, you know, so you can see it, individual letters here. So I'm assuming this is one of the ones where you peel off, you stick it on something, and then you can peel it off and the letters stay and the rest of it goes away. So you have a nice aluminum shiny looking logo on there. You might even want to put it on your shifter. I don't know. I don't know if it, how well it's going to stick to the ABS, but yeah, you could do that. Right. Knobs. Let's talk about the knobs real quick. Comes with two of them. Kind of nice. We have the sequential shifter one, which is obviously a kind of a longish looking thing. And we have a more roundy short one for the H pattern shifter. And easy enough to put these on. They just roll right on like that and then we're ready to go. And actually, it feels like a pretty good shifter action here, especially for the price point of this thing. I was a little surprised when I was first using it, and I was going, wow, this is not too bad. And these knobs themselves, easy to really quick change. You can just change them so quickly. It's, wait a minute, this one is, uh, okay, this one goes further down, apparently. See how far down that one goes for your sequential shifter. But you can actually change that if you want to. If you wanted it sitting up higher, you could actually change this by raising this all the way up to the top of this. And this is actually held on with, and we'll be taking that off, and you'll see that later, by some set screws, four of them, all the way around. And it's good to see four of them, too. So a lot of things you see like this are only three, but I like that they actually have a four set screw, because it evens out the pressure when you're tightening out, and you can really get it nice and even on the shaft. Now, these shifter knobs themselves, very nicely done units. These are ABS also. Yeah, this is definitely not PLA or PTEG. And yeah, again, you know, it's printed, but you can see that there's really hard to see the printed, the 3D printed lines on these. So very cool that they've got a nice finish on this. 
Same way with this one. Now, we, this particular one, you can see the 3D printing effects on the very top part of it there, which is not abnormal. I mean, usually in 3D printing, you'll see stuff like that. It doesn't affect the performance, obviously, but just want to show you guys everything I can. And this shifter is actually only 408 grams heavy. It's, it, in fact, uh, I've got a uh, shot here that shows it 408 grams. And of course, these, these knobs don't add much at all. I think it's, with this knob on it, it's 422 grams. And with the longer knob, it was actually 438 grams. Anyway, very lightweight, obviously. And they come in different colors. The, you can see a red and a white here that they've actually painted into the logo. It's kind of a milled in section there where they've actually painted it. So you can actually get a red and a white, a gray, and of course this black. And I'm showing you a picture of it there, the options, right? So yeah, you can order whichever one you want. Uh, I think that's about it. It does come with some instructions and just showing you how to tighten the tension up here on the screws, the Phillips screws, telling you how to change the shifting method and what not to do. And of course we have different mount instructions too as far as, as far as securing your mount to this actual housing. Now it's very cool how you change this from an uh, eight pattern, which I have now, you can see it's moving sideways, to a sequential. Simply just push down on the shifter itself and rotate it 90 degrees, let it go and it comes back up. So that's to actually change the mechanism's orientation to the ramps, the shifting ramps on here. So now we're in sequential mode. So now it'll pop back to the center. Simple. Couldn't be easier. And of course, we do have to go back down here and change our switch over to the sequential mode. That's the H pattern mode and the sequential mode. So that the electronics know that we're now sequential and know which sensors to be looking for to be activated. Yeah, I think this, this actually is pretty clever. It's an uh, easy design as far, as far as changing back and forth. It, it's right up there with the Fanatic 1.5, how easy it is to change that from sequential to an H pattern. Right, so that's about it for the closer look. What we'll do next is, yeah, we'll just go ahead and get to the look inside. Now for our look inside segment for the SHH shifter. First off, we're gonna go ahead and take the top part off and I'm going to pull this M17 threaded aluminum bit off of there so that we can actually get the cover off because it's obviously these gates are not gonna fit over that. So we'll go ahead and pull that off. Now these are two millimeter set screws and there's four of them all the way around. So we'll go ahead and pull those off and it should slide right up. But before I do that, I always like to take a pencil and just put some markings on the bottom here of where this should be sitting because from the factory, it's set to accept these knobs that they make. So I like to do that. It's just a little step. It takes a little, just a second and it's much easier to align this back up once we have it off. So let's go ahead and speed this up and get these set screws out. And it looks like I didn't have to take all of them out, <laughs> which I was kind of thinking that might be true. So we've got two of them left in there, but that was loose enough for it to come off. Now, I didn't have it all the way tight either because I've actually been messing around with this shifter before I shoot video. So I probably had those a little bit loose anyway. But yeah, you can see it's a pretty simple piece here, this aluminum piece. Very simple, but very effective, which tends to be the trend for the shifter in general. Right, let's put that aside. Now we're gonna have two two and a half mil screws, or rather two, two and a half mil screws are gonna be four total that we pull off these little cap head socket units here. So we can get this gate off and we have a better look at everything. So we'll speed that up. So I wanted to show you that these are actually stainless steel little cap, socket head cap screws and five mil. I believe these are five mil. Now these are three mil. Yeah, these are really small. See how thin that is? Pretty sure that's a three mil. But yeah, they're stainless steel units too, so that's nice. Now this gate should come right off, and it does. You can see it slides right off the top. And again, just like the other gate we saw in the closer look, this is a Durlin unit or POM, and very nicely done, very nicely machined. You can see the ramps machined in down there, and you can see the way that they have radiuses on the tops of these to facilitate shifting. Very nicely done. No rough edges anywhere. You gotta love Durlin or the POM stuff. It's very CNC machine friendly. Right, get that out of the way. Now, we can take a look inside of here on the top part. 
And the first thing that I see are some circuit boards, right? We got a circuit board over here and we have a circuit board over here. And they are connected by these ribbon cables. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see those. There's one right there. So we have one right back there. And if we flip it around, we can see there's another one over here on this side right there. Now these circuit boards have these sensors on them. I don't know how well these are going to show up, but you can kind of see them there, I think. And they have very thick wires on them too. So these sensors are capable of picking up magnetic field, right? And that's how we're going to determine whether we made a shift or not, or how to tell the board that, yeah, we've activated a shift and sent it down to the, the conversion board down here and out to the computer. So that means we have to have magnets somewhere. So I'm pretty sure these are magnets around this little piece here. See this? You can see these metal parts. See, we've got one here, and we got one all the way around in each position, right? So there's four of them. Now, to prove they're magnets, all we have to do is find a piece of metal, which we use this two millimeter Allen wrench that came with this kit. And yeah, it just sticks right on there. So we know they're magnets, and we know this one over here is a magnet. Okay, so obviously when we shift this shifter, or we actually shift up, let me get this away so you guys can see it. I'm going to shift down here, and you can see that magnet is actually going to go right in front of that sensor there, if I can get it to shift. There we go. So now we have the magnet in front of that sensor, and yeah, it's going to create a signal that goes down to the board and gets converted over to the computer and lets us know we made a shift. Right, simple enough, right? Very clever design, and if you'll notice, there's actually a spring right here on this plate. See that spring right there? And there's another one, obviously, on the bottom. Might be able to see that one a little better on there. But yeah, that's for, I'm, not, I'm assuming that's for if there's an aggressive shift, then, you know, you're banging on this thing, going through the patterns like we do when we're aggressively shifting. And if, you know, if it keeps it solid, keeps it from being a solid unit, if it ever gets bumped or it goes too far and hits this maybe, then we have kind of a suspension effect. So, let's, uh, so you can actually see that it'll slide down on, on the two screws on either side here and over here. So yeah, kind of like a little suspension for your PCB board. <laughs> Pretty cool. And again, a, a nice attention to detail here. This is, again, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised at a few things on this shifter, especially like I said before, as the at the price point that this thing is coming in at. Right, now we can better see the adjustments now for the spring tension. You can see the spring down in there. It's underneath the shaft. There it is. And we have a Phillips screw here, and we've got one over here directly across from it. And of course, what we do is screw these down to increase the preload on the spring, which increases the tension of the shifts when we're actually making our shifts. And you can see they're sitting rather proud now. So you can screw them that far down where they actually stop on the, on the actual piece of, I guess that's ABS. That looks like ABS that this is in. And yeah, so you screw it all the way down and it pushes this washer. There's a metal washer here. Pushes that down, which compresses this spring and puts the preload on it, increases that preload again to increase the effort for the shift. I'll probably have that all the way down when I'm shifting. Right. We can see also there's an ABS piece here on the top where these four screws are. That's an ABS printed part. But we've got some Durlin in here also, and we'll probably see that once we get to the bottom. And of course, we have our aluminum sh shaft here. And you can see on the aluminum shaft, what I was talking about, the set screws actually have scoured the shaft a little bit. So you might be able to use those to line up that aluminum piece we took off if you don't have a line like I do. But that pencil line is going to let me line it up very easily. Right. So, yeah, not much else to see here. The, really, the, what's going on, it's easy to see how this thing really works as far as the, the changing on from sequential to H pattern. It's going to be in the bottom. And to get in there, get this out of the way, there's two set screws right here next to these threaded inserts. You got one there, you got one over here. And as you see, this plate looks like it will come off, but I think these set screws are holding it in. I don't see any on the front, just the Newt logo there, so no set screws. So what I'm going to do is Pull these set screws out and see what happens. <laughs> and they're two millimeter set screws, so we'll take our two millimeter wrench or driver and go ahead and take these out. I'm going to set this down so I can put a little bit of pressure on it. And yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pull these out and we'll speed that up. Right, so you can see I've actually screwed them out a pretty far away. And if you see here, this is the actual part of the case, and of course, that's the 
line there that shows the separation of the plate. And I thought because of the thickness of this, if I pulled it out these, these, this far, it should come out. So we're going to get a shot here and try to pry it open with our finger. And there it goes. Ah, it is coming out. And we can see the two holes as I pull this out. And there's probably some wires in there. Obviously, we have the USB port moving when I'm doing this. So we know there's a board in there attached to this plate. Be very, very careful. We don't want to mess anything up. And we'll just go ahead and pull that out and take a look. There it is. There's our USB conversion board, and we've obviously got some connectors on it. We want to be very careful here not to mess anything up. So I'm going to set this down. And I'm going to take these plugs off so I can get this plate separated. I could just leave it like this if I wanted to look in there, but to better show you guys this stuff, I want to have this detached. Now, I'm going to pull these plugs off. There's actually two of them, but I'm paying attention to the orientation of these plugs. All right, so you can see I've actually got two free pins over here on this side. So I'm going to make sure that they are not covered when I plug it back in or something may not work right. So it's just kind of doing your due diligence, if you will, as far as paying attention to what's going on before you take anything off. So I'm going to go ahead and just, I don't, you guys won't be able to see this because it's kind of fiddly and it's hard to get in here to get this off. And I'm just kind of wiggle them back and forth. There we go. They come right off. So here's the USB board. And this comes up in the controller board, I think is a Zen something. I forget the other part of the name. But yes, it's a, it looks like a Chinese made USB board. And yeah, pretty simple. And it's performing the duties of converting the regular signals into our USB signals and sending it over the computer. Right, you get a closer look there. And there's really no identifying marks on this thing because I actually looked at it before. And yeah, so not a lot to see. So we'll set that aside. Now let's take a look inside what's going on here. All right, so we've got some roller bearings here. And we have, again, you can see where those four screws that were on the top are going all the way through to the bottom, here, here, and around, around that perimeter of that ABS piece. But right here, this main piece here where the shaft is connected, that is actually a POM or Durlin piece, right? And the ramps that these roller bearings, you can see these roller bearings, we've got four of them, are actually made of Duralyn also, right? So right now we're in the sequential shifter mode. So what we're really doing is using the ramp configuration. There's a, there's a double ramp configuration here. I'm not sure how well this is gonna show up on the video, but I'll do my best. We've got a ramp here, and that's for sequential. But if we move over and down, set down deeper, there is actually an H pattern ramp, all right? So the H pattern ramp, let's see, we're in sequential right now, aren't we? Yeah. So we're actually sitting a sequential, so we'll go with that first, all right? So I'm going to show you, there's actually a profile on this ramp. Uh, hopefully it shows up pretty well, where that roller bearing is going to be riding, all right? So you see how it's ramped? In other words, as we push for a sequential shift, let's see if I can get this to work. There it goes. It goes up the ramp, all right? Well, there's no notch or anything holding anything. So because of the spring tension on the shaft and the assembly in general, if I let go of this, it's going to pop back down in that groove, just like that. And of course, the same thing happens for the other side. It climbs up the ramp, and then as soon as we relieve the pressure, it'll drop back in. And that's what we want for sequential shifting. Very clever design here, actually. I like the way this is done. And it's made of Duralyn or the POM, so it's very durable plastic, and really heavy-duty stuff, so it should get a lot of life cycles out of this, I would imagine. Right, so that's how the sequential shifter is working. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to try to show you this. It's not easy to do. We have to, let's see, I, I have to go counterclockwise now because I went counter, I went clockwise 90 degrees to get it in the sequential. So what we're going to do is be turning this. You'll see this turn and these other two bearings here that are sitting in here that aren't engaged are currently, they're going to rotate and engage in these ramps here. You see those down in there? It's hard to see exactly what's going on with them, but yeah, it, I guess once I turn it, I, you'll be able to see better. But it's hard to see them. They're down underneath here right now, and this is kind of in the way when we're in sequential mode. So let's see if I can do that without tearing anything up. Got to get a good grip on it and spin it. There we go. See how that spun around? Now, the roller bearings that were engaged on our little ramp over there are now twisted out of the way, right? And the other bearings are twisted into their own ramp profile or notched profile. There's not, it's not really a ramp here. Here we have like three grooves. We've got one on each side right now because we're in the center position. Again, I'm not sure how well that's 
going to show up. But as you, I shift, maybe it'll, it'll, you'll be able to tell better what it looks like. But we have basically two bumps on that Durlin piece in there. And as the shifter goes over that bump, it'll stay. So let's go ahead and do that and see what happens. Here we go. See how it didn't pop back out. And you can see that we've opened up another, a space next to that bearing over here. And that's where it rests in the neutral position. And you can see there's a little bump piece shining right there. It's a little raised area in that ramp section, right? So that's what's keeping the shifter over in gear. And that's what we, how it needs to operate for an H pattern. So we'll put it back to neutral. And you can see it pops right back in the neutral. And we're going to go over the next bump. And we're in the other gears. So that's how it works. Pretty simple, right? We got roller bearings on a nice hard Durlin plastic and it's yeah out and it's well greased from the from the factory so i would imagine we're going to get some long life cycles out of this yeah they definitely use enduraline where they need to so yeah very clever design we can rotate it and it pops in like i said it's very easy to do and yeah i'm, I'm impressed i have to say that they, they really must have done a lot of r&d to come up with this design because it, it is a very clever design the way this works and it seems to be very effective and I would think that you're going to get some decent life cycles out of this shifter because of the way this is designed. Right. Anything else? We can see there is actually a spring over here. Where's the spring? There it is. All right. So that's the tensioning spring that keeps tension as we're shifting. And right now we're in neutral. We can see it pushes against it that way. You see those screws that are put into the plastic are actually holding the ends of that spring. All right. And we can see the metal shaft that everything rotates on as far as on that axis sticking out over here. And of course it doesn't stick out as much on the other side where the spring is because we need room for the spring. And we have a nice plate here, another little design consideration that I really like. And again, attention to detail is evident here, I think. The wiring is got its, has its own channel that goes all the way up to the top where it, those plugs that we saw before plug into the circuit boards. See those plugs there? There's one over there. So there's actually a, a little section here, plastic section, and there it is. Let me see it from the top. See the wires in there? And we'll see it from the bottom. That they've added to the 3D print to keep those wires out of the way. So good cable management there to make sure it doesn't, nothing can get in the way of the mechanicals going on here as we're using the shifter. Again, a very clever little design here. I really like what they've done. I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting something like this when I got this shifter. Right. So now, yeah, there's not much else to see on the inside. Look, I think we've seen everything. We know how it works now. And yeah, I think they've used Durlin in all the right places and metal in the right places. It's nice that we, again, they have these roller bearings and they're, you can see they're really greased up quite well. So yeah, I have, uh, I'm enthusiastic, I think, about the shifter and how it's gonna perform. But again, we won't know until we actually get it attached to our rig and running it, which will be the next segment as far as attaching this to your rig and running it. And we'll talk about the mounting options that we have and what we'll be using to mount it to our rig. All right, so let's look at the adjustments and conversions available on this SHH shifter. First of all, the gates. We'll talk about those. The gates come off pretty easily. We've got four screws here, and this is a seven plus R gate. That's what they are calling it because we have seven speeds plus a reverse. It's easy enough to get these off. It's four cap screws, the socket head cap screws that we saw before on the look inside when I took those off. So we'll go ahead and pull those off and speed that up. So here's the little 3mm M3 stainless steel socket head cap screws. Little, actually nice units being stainless steel. I, I thought for sure it would just be steel or maybe aluminum. Right, so to get this off, we don't have to pull off the adapter that we use for threading the knobs on this M17 adapter. Now I did take it off for the look inside just to get it out of the way. Right, so these gates will come right off as soon as you have the screws out obviously and it'll come right off the center or actually it might come out of that one too. But I just came out of the center. It's got a lot of room there to do it and yeah, easy enough. And again, this is the back side of that and you can see the radius ends on those the gates, the teeth of the gates as we call them. So yeah, so facilitate some easy shifting. And we're going to put, actually, you know what I'm going to do? This is the six speed. And of course, that would go right back on just like that. Put your four screws on. But I've got it in sequential mode. So what I'm going to do is turn this into a dedicated sequential shifter with this 
Durlin two-piece. And plus, I just want to put this on. <laughs> it's got that carbon uh, vinyl on it. And yeah, let's just go ahead and put this on. Now, there are two different sizes. You see one's bigger than the other. And that's because the way this pattern is in the shifter itself, you're going to want the wider one on the right side like that. And it's easy enough to figure it out, obviously, if you're putting this together. And they fit in there together like that. So let's go ahead and get the screws put back in and see how that looks. Okay, so we've got it put on, and actually it looks pretty cool, I think, for the sequential mode. And obviously it's going to keep it nice and straight as far as our sequentials shifts in case we have it off angle or something and we're slapping it. It'll keep it nice and straight, and you're, you never have to worry about it jumping somewhere on the where it shouldn't be as far as jumping over to another gate or another spot in the gate. So, yeah, I kind of like this, and it kind of lines up pretty good. The bottom does anyway. The bottom is almost, is pretty close to being dead on as far as the pattern is concerned. I don't know, well, that's showing up there. But still, very easy to put on, and yeah, I like this. And with our sequential shifter on there, that's what it looks like. We'll be shifting like this. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I don't have it in sequential mode. I'm going to say, it shouldn't be doing it that, that way, should it? So, let me push this down and turn it 90 degrees. There we go. Now we're in sequential mode. So if you're slapping this around and being lazy or sloppy like sometimes I do, then yeah, no worries of popping it in, in the wrong gate and then getting something weird going on. Right. I kind of like the, the black look there too. Black on black. So there we have it. Easy enough to change these plates out and nice. And again, this is why they split this plate was because obviously to get it past the M17 threaded lug we have here attached to the actual shaft. So you had no way to get that through there, right? So yeah, well thought out again. I'm, I'm liking the, the thought process that's gone into the shifter so far. And let's talk about the adjustments. Now here's one adjustment we can't make with it in sequential mode, right? And that's the preload on the actual shifter itself. So we're gonna have to pull this back out. Well, wrong one. So these will just fall right out. I said, assuming they would. There we go. And the adjustment mechanism itself, if you saw a closer look and look inside, you may have seen a little bit more of it. But uh, it's a preload situation going on on the spring here. See the spring down in there? It's underneath this steel washer. Now I've actually got it down all the way. You can see the screws, the Phillips screws there. We got one here and one opposing on the other side. Push down that washer. You can obviously see some space in there, I think, if you. If I can get the right angle on it there. So it's pushed down all the way, which means the preload on the spring is all the way down. Now, it's simple, obviously, just actually taking a screwdriver and loosening these things, the, the screws, obviously, and tightening them to, to however far you want to go as far as how hard it is to shift, right? It's pretty stiff right there, and I've got it all the way down. But again, once it's mounted to your rig, solidly mounted, then you'll be able to tell better just where you like it because this might be too tight, but I don't know. I kind of like my stuff hard to move. Right. So once we have a gate on here, though, things change a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and put this gate on here just to show you that. Actually, I'm going to be running this gate anyway. It's a six speed. So bear with me and I'll see if I can spin these on real quick. Okay. So now that we have this on here, and let's say I want to adjust the tension on it. Now, chances are, if this is your personal shifter, you're going to adjust this once, unless you like something different between the sequential and the eight-speed, or rather the H pattern when you're using or switching between them. Now, getting down in here to these screws is possible. As you can see, we can still see them. But what you have to do is you have to kind of bend it out a little bit to get your screwdriver in there. And there's another consideration here with this, this lug. If you have a regular type of screwdriver like this, and you want to get down in those Phillips screws, let's say I bend it back to where I can get access. It just proves, what I'm really trying to do is improve the angle on the Phillips head screw here so they don't strip it out or put a sideways pressure on it, which causes these kind of things to strip out. So I would kind of lift it, to put some pressure on it like that, and then I would come down here with the screwdriver, right? But here's the deal. See how that 
the screwdriver, because of this lug here, puts me at an off angle, which is not what you want to do. I mean, you, I could probably still do this, but you don't really, really want to do that it, because once you strip one of these little Phillips screw heads out, yeah, it's going to be a pain to get it out and then put, find yourself another screw and all that. Much better to do something different. So either you get a little short nubby, stubby one, as we call it in there, take this off. I mean, there's different ways to do it. Yeah, slide this up and out of the way or put a, a, a stubby screwdriver in here or get you something that is long. I have a very long, some of these bits, Phillips screw, uh, Phillips driver bits and very long ones. So this is obviously going to clear up here. If I'm in the screw from here, I don't have to move it very much and I'm straight on it. See how now I'm straight along that shaft? So now I've got a straight shot down on the head of that screw. So all I got to do is loosen it or tighten it from there and then go over to the other side and I can actually do the same thing on this one, I believe. Yeah, I can get straight up and down on that one too. So I can still do that with this H pattern gate on here. However, once we have the sequential gate on there, obviously it's going to close all that up and we won't be able to do it. So again, this is really the only adjustment that I, that I know of on this. And I'm going to have mine all the way down the start as far as hard as it can be. But I just want to show you guys, in, again, the different considerations of when you're trying to do an adjustment on this. Yeah, this kind of a screwdriver being at an angle is going to tear the head of that screw up more than likely and cause you pain and misery somewhere down the road if not immediately. <laughs> right, so that's it for the adjustments and conversions part of our video. And yeah, we're gonna get on to the actual mounting the L bracket on here and start our process to get this thing mounted to the rig. Now we can start to get this thing ready to mount. And of course, as you saw before in the closer look, we have a number of brass inserts in here, actually a total of 12. And the 80-20 mounting bracket that I got is a an L bracket that has obviously the holes for those screws and holes for larger screws, which I'm going to use M8s because I'm going to use a 40 series profile for this. Right. Now we have obviously different options for mounting this. The lowest I can go looks like right about there. And I'll have still have two on the top exposed. And this would get the it, let's say if I was mounting this shifter like this, because I actually saw a picture of this mounted at a show, and they had it mounted low like this, and they had the profile actually in a horizontal instead of vertical position like that. And they had it sitting here like this, which meant that they had the L bracket further down to be able to make up room, obviously, to have the reveal for the shifter over here. So they had that further down and that's just the way they mounted it. But I'm going to be doing something a little different. Probably not going to look at quite as pretty, but I'm going to mount, I want to mount vertically this way, right? So to do that, I'll put the bracket on here on the end and then I'll kind of put the shifter here and see where I want the shifter to sit. Now, because this is going to be a profile mount, I don't have to worry too much about where that shifter is, except for aesthetics, really. <laughs> on as far as in relation to this piece of profile because profile is going to be able to go straight up and down right so the height of the shifter is really not important because i'll be able to adjust that over on the cockpit so i'm going to go ahead and just kind of mount it like this so it's flush so i'm going to go with the these screws the let's see I think if i go all the way to the top ones because of the way the holes are on this bracket then i'll actually be sitting above the profile see how it sits a bit high there then I'll go down to the second holes, and that's probably where I'm that's where I'm gonna want to do it. Right? So once I've located where I want the bracket to be, I can kind of just rest the shifter back like that and start getting my M4 screws. And again, curious about these, <laughs> that it's just a slot screw head. Right? So I was I was thinking it'd be nicer to have maybe a some kind of a socket head caps type screw for it, but it is what it is, that's what they give us, and that's what we're gonna use. And you could always source something different if you wanted to later on to, well, again, at this point, it's purely aesthetics. They're still going to do the same thing, which is hold this bracket nice and tight against this ABS housing. And we got six screws. I'm going to use all six screws because I have actually six available holes. You never have enough screws holding things together, right? <laughs> 
So there we have it. And what I'm going to do now is go ahead and tighten this up. And I'm going to speed this up for you guys because it's six screws and they're flat slots. So they're not as easy to do if it, like if you have hex heads and you got a hex driver. So let's go ahead and do that. Right, so we've got it done, and you really don't want to tighten these, put a lot of torque on these screws. I mean, you want to tighten them and get them tight, obviously, and it's kind of a judgment call when you're doing this kind of thing, because remember, we've got some inserts sitting in here in ABS, 3D printed ABS, so you really shouldn't have to turn this really, really, really hard, because chances are, you, gotta, you, know, you could pull one of these inserts out, right? And you don't want to do that, because once you pull one out, you'll need a whole new housing to replace that insert because it's, it's already ripped out of that hole. So I just snug it up nice and tight and that's, you know, get a tug, that's, that's really tight actually. That really feels good. So I, I don't have any problem leaving it like that. Now, when we put this, I'm gonna screw it right away, over here onto the front of the profile, it's gonna sit just like we said before, like this, right? And it looks like once I tighten this down that there might be some screws, heads that are not quite making contact. You see a little wiggle there? And I could probably, and, and really the problem is this is such a tight bend right here. The angle is, that 90 degree angle is so tight and acute that, and you can see the angle in this bracket is actually kind of rounded. So it's never going to quite sit, you know, perfectly flat. But it probably is not going to make a big difference. Now I'm going to, there they are. <laughs> I've already got my nuts in there. I was looking for them. I was going, where'd they go? There they are. So I'm going to go ahead, you know, obviously these are some roll-in 8 millimeter 40 series T-nuts, they're the spring balls, and I'm going to go ahead and I've got my bolts already over here, and I'm using obviously M8s, and these are socket head cap bolts, and I have to use a washer in here, not only because, you know, the bolt won't go through this hole here, but the washer gives me a little bit more height, and this is a 15 millimeter cap head M8 hard to find 10 millimeter ones. And yeah, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use these. Actually, 10 millimeter would have been too shallow. Oop. Because I'm compensating for the thickness, obviously, of this plate here, and how far down the screw can go in the channel in that T-nut. So, got it all figured out though, and we'll just go ahead and see if we can get these started. And it's just wonderful working with Aluminum profile bits, isn't it? It's like an erector set. <laughs> you can always build something. Now, this is a six millimeter hex head on these M8s, so we'll just snug that down real quick and see what we got. First off, I'm gonna kinda use my chest here to push this while it's still loose towards me to try to get nice and flush up against the joint here, or where we're actually hitting the shifter. And then I'm just gonna snug, you don't have to tighten these T-nuts a, a lot either. Just gotta snug them up pretty good. There we go. If it starts hurting your wrist, you're probably tightening them too much. All right, so there we have it. And like I said, you can see the bottom there on the screws, you can see the gap. See how it's not quite touching the profile underneath here, but it is touching on the top. And I don't think that's gonna be a problem. Once this is mounted, I don't think it's, the shifter's really gonna move much because this is a pretty stout piece of metal here. And I don't think it's gonna give us a lot of problem. And I, I still have it in sequential mode, let's see if I can. Put it over there in H P. Here we go. Yeah, that feels pretty good. All right. So, I'm going to mount this onto my uprights that hold the wheelbase on the P1 cockpit. And it'll be on the inside. So, I'm going to put a couple of corner brackets on it. So, I can actually slide this back and forth and raise it up and down. So, yeah. I should be able to get this shifter dialed in perfectly to the reach I want it once I have it over there. So that's what we'll do next. We'll go ahead and put this on and see how it looks. So we have the shifter mounted on our P1 rig. And like I said, I was going to mount that to the upright on this P1 rig that holds the 15 millimeter plate here for the wheelbase mount. And we'll walk around the side here so you guys can see what I've done. And yeah, I've got no less than four corner brackets holding this 40 by 80 40 series profile. 
And of course, this is easy to move up and down and back and forth. So it was just really simple to get a good position dialed in, you know, pretty quickly. Only the, the only thing is, you know, mounting all these corner brackets does take a little bit of time, but it's definitely worth it in the end because you have a very rock solid mount for the shifter. Right. So the shifter's kind of just hanging there in the air. And what I'm going to do now is just go ahead and get in the rig and see how it feels. All right. So it's in a great position. This is going to be very easy for me to drive. And like I said before, it's because of the way we this profile is mounted. And you got to love profile for being able to dial something in with, without a, too much work, actually. But yeah, this I think this is going to be fine. You can see it's actually moving some when I'm doing my shifts, especially when I'm going to the front. Well, to the back too. But that's to be expected. I mean, th after all, this is a 3D printed ABS housing here that we're mounting to. But it actually feels a little bit more solid than I thought it would. So, yeah, I think it's punching it above its weight a little bit here for what it is. But, yeah, we're going to go ahead next and just get in and drive it and see how it feels then. So here we are in my favorite test bed, iRacing, Sebring, and the Lotus 79. All right. So first thing about the shifter, when you first start using it, is it feels really pretty natural as far as the H pattern. I think they've got the spacing on the gates here pretty much nailed. Um, it didn't take me long at all to come up to speed. And yeah, I wasn't missing many shifts at all as soon as I had, you know, a lap down or so that fast. Yeah, so I was impressed by that. It just felt natural as far as where the gates were falling and being able to get it dialed into the perfect position for my hand to just come down and grab it also helped a lot with the profile mount the way I have it mounted here. So yeah, it kind of all comes together. And the actual shifting action, as you saw there when I was downshifting for this corner, is pretty smooth. There's really, the only way you know you've made the shift is that you, in, you reach the end of the gate, you know, when you're shoving it into the gate and bam, you hit the end stop there. Then you know you've got the gear change. There's really not a lot of feeling as you're transitioning between gears itself. And I was kind of expecting that. It reminds me a lot of the Thrustmaster TH-8A. It's pretty smooth too, even though when you're holding it in your hand, it doesn't feel smooth. You can feel that notch as you're moving through neutral into the next gear. But when you're driving like a, like this, you see here, I'm pretty aggressive here. I'm hammering on it pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's pretty just like a smooth move from one gate to the next. Now I also put it in a sequential mode and I use the sequential plate here too. I thought that would be appropriate instead of just switching it over to sequential and you know using the regular gate even though I did use it that way for a little bit but yeah this way in sequential mode it if you're push, pushing or you got a natural pull when you're actually pushing or in other words if you're actually moving it laterally when you're making your shift uh, and some people do that it depends on the angle you're actually grabbing it at this plate when you put it on there really helps keep it out of miss shifts and just keeps it where it needs to be in the center there so yeah I, I like the way that worked now also here the sequential shifter again just a smooth shift no real indication that you're pushing it into a gear and i really wasn't expecting it it's just like i said in a lot of parts of the review is at the price point it behaves much like shifters in the same price point and which is a good thing especially for a 3d printed housing here as you can see it does have some movement if you watch carefully especially in aggressive downshifting in the H, H pattern mode, but that's you know totally acceptable, I think. It really doesn't ruin the experience at all. You really don't even notice it, actually, when you're doing your shifts. So, yeah, uh, just having a good time here with this little shifter. It, it really does a great job. I think it punches a little bit above its weight for, for what it is and at the price point. So what we'll do is, yeah, we'll just finish out another hot lap here if you want to, and if not, then I'll see you guys over at the Final Thoughts.
Final thoughts on the SHH shifter. The main casing on this unit is made from 3D printed ABS filament, which is known for its toughness and durability. I did try to flex the case from the sides and only found one area where I could produce a very small amount of movement, but not enough to cause any problem for the internal parts, I think. I thought the way the shifter's internal mechanism works is quite clever. Pushing down the shifter lever and rotating it 90 degrees is really all it takes to go from H pattern mode to sequential mode. Using roller bearings to ride in the Durlin shifting ramps gives a smooth action to all of your shifts, with the notches in between providing a feel of actually engaging a gear. Of course, this action is much lighter than what you would find in a real gearbox. Another plus here is that there is no contact with the magnetic sensing electronics when making a shift. Now, this does away with a wear point that other shifters might have. I also like the way the PCB boards that contain the sensors are mounted with a spring suspension feature, which will provide for a better long-term durability, I think. Also of note here is the attention to detail on this shifter. I'm talking about the little things, like adding an additional internal plate to the design for protecting the cabling that runs the length of this shifter's case. Now, when actually driving the SHH, I found it, well, kind of easy to come up to speed and produce accurate shifts. The shifter lever moved smoothly between the gates, allowing quick up and down shift combinations. I was wanting for more resistance to the shifting force, but I do think its force at the maximum setting is in line with other shifters at this price point. Now, I also ran the SHH in sequential mode. Here again, this unit did the job of letting you know you made a shift. Now, nothing really special here. You know, it just gets the job done. Mounting the shifter to an aluminum profile was quite easy and I was able to get as solid a mount as an ABS case shifter can get, I think. <laughs> Still, as expected, there is movement in the shifter case when driven aggressively but not enough to ruin the experience. The SHH also comes with enough extras in the kit like shifter gates and knobs to give you a good sense of value to the package. And you can get it in four different colors with custom features available for additional cost. Now the mount you choose will also be extra. Considering the price that a mounting bracket and the shifter comes in at, I think most people will be happy with their purchase of an SHH shifter. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Zim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.